let's get into it. We start this session with uh, JK. You're in your morgue. It's uh, still extremely busy. But uh, what's more interesting about this evening is you have received a book out of nothing. It just seemed to have appeared in your uh, private living room. Uh, it's wrap, uh, wrapped in, in some cloth just to protect it. And it's uh, it's quite a large tome. You can see from the shape. I'll go over and take off the cloth and read what the book's title is, if there's any. Uh, can you do a intelligence and occult? Would my linguistics work into this? Oh, very much so. So one extra dice, right? Yep. Four. Four is good. Um, it's definitely a cult of nature. And when you have that thought, you activate or you can see with your uh, sense the unseen that it is uh, glowing and uh, definitely magical of origin. It's not thaumaturgy. It's something else, um, but it does not look watered or anything from what you can see. I'll open the book and start figuring out what sort of tome it is. Well, you fiddle around with it uh, for, for a while. All the pages are blank, but uh, you figure out when you, you write in it, the book actually talks back and it's translating whatever you're writing. And when you think of it, Victor mentions something about a book that's able to teach languages if you can get it to behave, I think was his, his exact words. If I can get it to behave, hmm. Could I try dripping a drop of blood and writing with that in it? Mm hmm and seeing if anything different happens. Um, the text stays longer before absorbed into the pages. And just... it's not translating, it's answering your question. Hmm. Is the Morgan still in my morgue? Yeah, she is uh, still writing her uh, biography. How many, how many pages has she gotten at this point? She's been writing nonstop for, for days, so there's a, quite a large pile of handwritten pages. I'll go over to her with the book and a blood bag and put it in front of her. And I'll just say, here you go. If you write something with blood in this, it'll help you. She looks confused. What do you mean if I write something in it? Try. And then I'll just give her a feather pen that she can dip into the blood bag. Uh, she writes something in uh, Latin which is then translated into English. She, uh, when the, the letters appear on the page, she's very excited. She claps her hand very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, like uh, she did when uh, Vaughn, he did his Balrog illusion in, in, in the Oblivion. Uh, and it's one of those moments where she does not seem like she's 2000 years old. Uh, but she's quite easily distracted by this and after a few seconds she does not even seem to notice you're there anymore. She's just giggling and writing in the book. So if you want to learn English you can use that book, it'll translate for you. I would still... She is... Like she's coming back to reality for a moment. She looks at you and says, I would still like to talk and practice. That is fair. 
we can have some lessons, but I recommend beginning with the written language. It's fine with me. You're the teacher. And with that sentence, uh, you hear uh, your bell and Albert enters your living room uh, with just a question. Who's teaching? Me. I'm teaching Morgan here how to understand English. Mm, still that project. Uh, he has his uh, usual satchel over his shoulder. He's starting to fill around with some bottles. Uh, he looks at you and says, I have all the ingredients we need to summon Vara's spirit. Good. I don't know. I don't have a way to bring her back into her body yet, but I think I will soon. Well, the intention of this exercise is... Um, more you're convincing her that it's a good idea to return to her body. I think that will make everything much easier if she's willingly coming back to life. Fair enough. So I'm simply gonna, well, summon her and you can have a private chat. That'll work, yes. I just need to make a roll here. This lovely place. I assume you go down to the very private basement. Yep. That's very ghost free and everything. Yep. That's enough. Uh, within your circle, I assume, uh, the one you drew around, Vara, to keep things in and out. A, uh, it almost looks like a mirror of fog that appears inside of it and you start hearing whispers multiple people like some some kind of tunnel is being made right now and uh, after a a few moments it does not seem like time passes in a normal fashion but it does seem rather quick. Uh, the spirit of Vara, just as she looks on that very table or, uh, or display pole, uh, she appears the same outfit. She's obviously uh, semi-transparent and uh, she's looking around confused. Um, JK, just a good measure. Can can you describe what she looked like back in uh, in the day? Well, uh, she had black hair, cold shoulder cut, uh, with deep brown eyes, and like kind of <laughs> kind of bordering on like tan skin, but still pale enough that. It was visible she's Mediterranean. And then wearing uh, a long, like, dark blue wartime dress. Um, as soon as she appears, Alfred leaves the room without any noise or sound, really. Uh, while she is still um, getting to grips with where she is right now. Good evening, old friend. It's been a while. She turns her head very fast, like she just kind of noticed that there are other people in here. Uh, she looks angry for a moment, and then confused again. And then she asks in broken Norwegian, uh, is it really you? Yes. Although it's been many years, it's still me. How has the other side been treating you? Poorly. Every day is a matter of survival. I'm running from reapers and other spirits who wants to turn you into coins. 
Well, in not so many days, I'll be able to bring you back into your body so you can walk around and feel the earth again. What do you mean, bring me back into my body? And then she looks at the body and she's shocked <laughs> to see herself lying there in pristine condition. Well, I've kept it safe and in good condition over the years. You kept my body safe all this time? Yes. She looks impressed and then like she's lost in thought at the prospect of, well, how would you go about something like that? After having been walking the streets of London the last 70 years by myself, it'll be nice to finally have someone to talk to who understands the loneliness of death. Well, I only wish you called sooner. Well, it's not an easy process, and I just recently got the measure and method to deal with this. What would this mean for me? Am I gonna remain dead? Am I possessing a corpse? Would I return how I was? What? What's the... I don't know all of the details. But I'm pretty sure you'll return to your body and being a, in a living corpse, or a living body. Oh, pretty sure. Good. Well, it, I assume it at least will be better than flying around as a spirit being haunted by other beings. Well, I'm worried now that I have seen the real world. Being human is not so fun. Once you know what's out there in the dark. That's fair enough. But you shouldn't worry about that. I have friends and enough resources to keep you safe. I guess I have to trust you then. You look different, she says and smiles. Much paler than I remember. Well, we both lost our humanity very close to each other, I guess. You died and I got embraced into the night. I can see it on you. Time has taken its toll. And you got used to it? Well, I had to. It was either that or die. Maybe I can too. It'll be fine. She's still looking at her corpse through all of this. It's a... I mean, maybe it does not occur to you at first, but because you see it every day, but it is a definitely a weird experience looking down at your own very pristine corpse. Um, so how do we do this? Do I just jump back in? What, what's the deal here? Well, I have to keep studying a book I have, and when I'm sure enough, then will have a process in which a life will be traded for a life. And I remain in this bubble until then? Either that or you can follow me around if you want. I would definitely like to see how you live or whatever you call it. Well, you're welcome to do so. And I'll dismantle the chain from around the body. She's hesitantly pushes to through where, where the, the ward was, but she sighs in relief when she's on the other side without being hurt.
So... Oh, and don't worry about others like me who can see you. Scarcely few of them can interact with ghosts anyway. I know. Some of your kind can. And you have a very distinct aura <laughs> when you're able to. Good to know. I have to look out for that myself. It's, it's like you've been touched by the other side. Well, not that long ago I did open a rift, so I guess that could be part of it as well. Yeah, it was uh, quite the subject of conversation on the other side. <laughs> a lot of very bad people got through. Well, it was the first step towards getting the book and getting the knowledge to resurrect you. I don't know if I should hug you or slap you. I can't believe you've gone through all this to resurrect me. I, I, I would be ungrateful if I didn't thank you, but I can't help but think if I'm worth it. Well, your death was in all ways accidental. Shrapnel from a bomb. Fucking Nazis. Yeah. It's not a fun way to go, definitely. Oh, and you shouldn't worry about that when you inhabit your body again. I've removed all the shrapnel and sewn everything up. Well, I look good. <laughs> I just hope I don't turn into a zombie or something like that. Oh no. I, I already know how to make those. Those wraiths don't really have control over the body in the same way. I just don't want to eat brains or whatever they do. Well, I survive off of blood, so it's not that bad. Will you turn me into one of you? If you want to. I have to think about it, but... Isn't that the only way that we can truly be together? I mean, I'm eventually gonna expire if she gestures towards the corpse. Well, it's up to you whether you want to live your life to the fullest or walk the night. That's a lot to think about. Let's see if you can get me back in my body first. Fair enough. There's a lot of things I wanted to eat, to eat in, in 70 years and also to feel the sun and water and the warmth. I haven't felt the sun in 70 years myself. Well, you'll die, right? I don't know. I haven't really tried. <laughs> Seems to be uh, the general consensus about you guys that sun is a big no-no. Yeah, we kind of pass out when the sun rises anyway. Yep, yeah, and become a corpse. I've seen it. It's the best time to haunt you guys. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, she's kind of moving around the, the room and to anyone but you it would look like she's glitching in and out of existence. Uh, it's, it's definitely taking a toll on her to remain visible and at some point she realizes she does not have to with you. Don't worry about your visibility. Becoming kindred has granted other opportunities and powers. I have developed my own. Wraiths can be very unique. Hmm. I mean, I've been working with the Banshee for the past year, so I understand that. Oh, those are dreadful. Nah, she's lovely. She's not around, is she? She's looking around frantically. I don't think she is at the moment, but I believe she'll show up at my call. Well, 
As long as she's under your control. Um, is there anything else you want to do before we change scene? Just show her around my mortuary and house. Show her Morgan. <laughs> mm. I don't know if actually if Morgan can see her. <laughs> I forget. I don't think she can. No. Well, you're you're showing her around, and I also assume at least Albert is preparing uh, the book and flicking through it to find the right spell for later, so you can begin studying it. Um, and then we jump scene. Naomi, you're in your flower shop. Early yes. evening. Yes. Um. Tending to your things, the last of your employees have, uh, have just left, yeah. and uh, you notice a, a an elderly man walking around on the street. Okay. Um, he is holding one of those very touristy maps, like these books that you can just fold out. And he's looking like he's very confused and he's not quite sure where he is. You do recognize him though. Is your uh, Living biological father, wandering okay. around, looking for something. Uh, the three letters you sent, uh, two of them have been opened, the ones for Alice and the one for uh, for Paul. Mm -hmm. But James has not opened his letter yet. Mm. You would be able to feel the ward break. Yep. Okay. Um she has a binder in front of her and she's kind of cataloging like a lot of her um purchases and or sorry um what she sold that day and catching out of her eye um outside the window um the man and this is the moment where she's never wanted a fake id more than in this moment um closes her book um is clearly stressed, but um, uh, kind of suspiciously wanders over a little bit, holding like a watering can to kind of uh, pour water. I don't know if in England, like they kind of uh, promote some of their plants by like standing them outside, but she goes and uh, like kind of peeks around the corner while like pretending to water the plants kind of with her watering can. Uh, and just more or less observing him. Um, what kind of emotional state do you think he's in? He's generally looking confused. He's about 75. Hmm. I mean, you've been... Uh, I think you've been kindred for a good while. Yeah. Uh, 44. Okay. So, he would... If he would see you right now, he would he would see his uh, well, very much younger looking daughter. But he is just looking around and trying to figure out this goddamn map, mm -hmm. mumbling a bit to himself and complaining about yeah. the size of the city. Yeah. So um, I guess she kind of slips on a mask to hide. Uh, she knows the pandemic's been going around. She's uh, made. She's in the process of making the vaccine. Um, so she kind of steps outside and I guess in the most polite British accent <clears throat> that she can muster up, she says, uh, may I help you? All right. I think that requires a manipulation. Yes. And either subterfuge, performance or persuasion. Okay. There it is. Oh, there it is. Um, I 
Ah, shit. I almost did them backwards. Uh, which one are you doing, subterfuge? Yep. Yeah. And then... Manipulation. Two. Well, to a British person you would not manage to fake it, but he's Canadian, so you think you're pulling it off. Okay. Uh, he's uh, looking up at you, you're asking him if he needs help, or... Uh, and, and looks over his very thick glasses at you. And uh, says, I'm looking for uh, at this flower shop. It should be around here. He's kind of pointing on the map, but it, he's pointing two streets away from where you're standing right now. So it does not make sense. Yeah. Uh, she walks with him, <laughs> looking for the shop. Well, <laughs> you walk a few, uh, few streets down, uh, past... Uh, well, the shop in front of your shop, really. And uh, he says, well, it can't be here, it can't be right. Maybe it's closed now. They should have better signing. He's really complaining mm -hmm. about the whole logistics of this, and it shouldn't be that hard to find a flower shop. Yeah, um, she asks, uh, while you're in London, um, it looks like you're alone. Uh, do you want a, a photo of like, does he have a camera or any technology on him? He has his iPhone 4, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I actually take a picture of him in front of her flower shop. Oh, oh, that's the shop. <laughs> thank you, thank you so so much for showing me this. Uh, yeah. He's just looking. Uh, there's, I think, a closed sign at this yeah. hour. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just... He gets a disappointed look on his face when he sees the sign. It's like, ah, damn it, too late. Do you think she's still open? Uh, I think, well, considering she walked out of it and she said he would have saw it, I was like, um, I know the owner. <laughs> oh, you do? Yes. That's great. Can you introduce Why? us? Uh, I can. Um, I'll, I'll call her up. She, uh, like, does, I guess, the text message, like, on her phone, mm. and, uh, was like, uh, yeah, did you, did you need her for anything? Um, it, like, you don't seem like you're from here. She sent me this cryptic letter and a text message, and, and, and quite frankly, I haven't heard from her in something like 20 years. Uh, I was quite surprised, so I, mm -hmm. but she's quite important, so I took a plane here. Mm -hmm. and... Well, she sounds like uh, she's going through her head, like, obviously, all she knows the contact perfectly. Um, but uh, she says to herself mentally, like, not out loud, that, like, oh, there's obviously reasons, like, why there's such a time gap, right? Um, uh, yeah, I could definitely uh, notify her. Um, she she'll be here in the morning normally like she tends to open and um yeah i just like left my shift um is there anything you would like me is there any coffee place local that you would like to meet her at and she's kind of like debating if she wants to like give the identity to like one of her coworkers, or um also like she might meet up but it has to be public um so, and obviously during the day is not gonna fucking work. Anyways, um, yeah, is like, is there anything I can relay, I guess? Well, I think I saw Starbucks down the street or something similar, but she specifically told me to come in the evening as that was okay. the only time she was available. Yeah, she's kind of like crunching numbers. Like it could have been Victor. It could have been like a fucking elder. It could have been Bradford like 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, she kind of walks with him a little bit more, I guess. Um, she looks uh, him up and down and like, as much as she f absolutely hates him, 
Um, she kind of looks like, is he well taken care of? Does he have a beard? Like, has he been homeless? Like, obviously, afford a plane flight. Um, being like, uh, and she doesn't want an old man walking around at night, I guess. Uh, do a either intelligence or wits and insight. Okay. To kind of gauge this man. Yeah. Mm. Let's do that. Three. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, can you do a willpower reroll just two dice without uh, you forgot your all specs? Oh, okay. Uh, and I forgot to mention it, so. Willpower Wait. reroll or just willpower? Yeah, just willpower reroll and then say two dice. That's the easiest way to do it. Sweet, thank you. Four. Um, well, from his claws, it does not seem like he is buying new clothes every year his, his jeans jeans seems at least 10 years old and he's from his kind of the way he he is and walks and and from the way he's dressed you kind of think that he's lower middle class mm. uh he's not in poor health or anything like that but he looks like a man who has had a very physical and rough job the most of it, his life. Yeah. Uh, something like a a, a a carpenter or something like that. Yeah. Uh, he's very hunched over and he's yeah. shaking on his left arm, but that's probably his age, perhaps mm. Parkinson's. Yeah. Um, He has a bit of a, a dry cough, probably mm. from cigarettes. But mm. I mean, from from his age, he's as well as uh, to be expected, really, from someone mm -hmm. who who has not had all the means in the world and the best healthcare and all the money he could have wanted. He seems like he's been lonely for a long time, like a, literally alone. Mm -hmm. and had a lot of time to think back on his life yes um it's really fucking tricky um so what I'm thinking is again trying to crunch the math uh she wants him just out of the reach of the domain that has nothing to do with um the sabbat so how about uh she thinks she's like oh i remember um i have a wad of cash on me <laughs> and this has a name on it which is probably his and was like um i know this really nice hotel um if you're staying from here and you're obviously family of of the owner um this was actually left for you and uh she kind of like she gives him the address too and like i guess calls up a taxi and was like here you go take this get the f out of here <laughs> and go in the ridge i don't need you here in the next week or so <laughs> but she doesn't say that she's like she's like um uh she'll meet back with you shortly um i don't know how to deal with the nighttime daytime stuff maybe around the same time uh um if you if you really climb all this way uh i guess we can arrange something but this was a gift from her more or less he looks confused for another hotel and hesitant yeah. about taking money like there's some kind of pride in him okay but the fact that it's from you uh, yeah. <laughs> uh he, he puts it in a, in his pocket and says mm, should i come back tomorrow then uh, I 
she has very busy, busy schedule. Um, and just to make sure, she kind of doubles checks the number to see if she has the right number. Um, and was like, I can't guarantee, guarantee anything, but gives him the business card and was like, I will do the best I can. Um, I think, let's just say she's very happy to hear that you came all this way. Well, I hope I get to see her. Well, I, I understand how it can be a bit awkward after all this time. Uh, uh, because yeah. this is exactly what your beast wants and has wanted all this time. You hear her yeah. in your head and just say, yeah. just drag him down to the yep. basement and tear yep. his head off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's like, oh, uh, I have some friends that could probably help me with that. You think uh, James was bad? <laughs> she kind of just says that to herself. Um, yeah, she more or less tries to pay him off to get at him, get him out of the he, territory. He gets in a cab and before he closes the door, he says it was, it was very nice to meet you, miss... Uh, Jessica Smith. Miss Smith. He just nods, smiles, and mumbles to, a bit to himself as the door closes. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then a question for you. Is there anything you would like to do before you change scene? I've been thinking about that for like oh, two weeks now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Um, she's gonna go window shopping for new dresses for the ball. Mm. Going out, <laughs> getting the essentials. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, mm. she she wants to spend a little bit more money. She was actually hoping that water cash was gonna be for the dress. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, I guess she texts everyone and just be like, uh, update what what um, update what you're doing. Everyone in the coterie. That's about it. That's all, all she needs right now. Yep. Yeah. We'll uh, return to you later. Sweet. Killjoy! You are... Uh, unless you want to do something before that, you're supposed to meet Nemesis in her... Well, Haven. Uh, but is there anything you want to do uh, as you wake up or some nightly activities before going there? I think so, no. Alrighty, well, uh, you're uh, in an alley outside this very particular kiosk and uh, a port through the shadows as you have been mm -hmm. before. The um, train station looks different now, the, the tar-like smoke has solidified into these mm, what looks like black and red crystals hanging from the ceiling and the walls <laughs> are covered in the easiest way to describe it actually is it looks like something that's on venom that kind of tar like webby thing gotcha uh the altar is glowing potently uh, from the bowl and you're very aware and i think you notice extra people quite fast there are three of them uh, in the room you haven't haven't seen before one of them is a, a man, he's dressed in very loose clothes, biker boots, and what is weird and standing out about his outfit is he has a very nice blazer jacket that does not fit with the rocket clothes. Uh, he has an uh, unkempt beard and mm -hmm. uh, hair, half, well, about shoulder length, just as unkempt and a very wild look in his eyes, he's not hiding the fact that he has eyes of the beast. Uh, the woman next to him is a, uh, well, she's beautiful, she has, uh, almost orange-red hair, uh, and a, a dress suit. It's a very, I want to say lawyer look, or a doctor perhaps, something that's, uh, in the higher levels of education. Uh, she's wearing half-moon glasses, just on the tip of her nose. And her hair is in a bun. 
and uh, she's have she has a uh, a pearl necklace around her neck, mm-hmm. and she's looking. Well, she's smiling, but she's there's something terrifying about her when you look at her. Something that makes you uneasy. And the last guy is, well, he's bald at the side. His hair is very long, like something you see from Vikings. And he has tattoos, you think, on his entire body, except his face. You just see it crawling up here. <laughs> he's wearing a, uh, a jeans jacket with folded up sleeves. You can see the tattoos. It's mostly uh, uh, Nordic mythology inspired. A uh, very large man, and he definitely has uh, the aura of a merc about him from your military training. This is uh, quite evident that this is an elite soldier. I see you found the other three horsemen. Exactly. She smiles. Uh, she points towards the first guy. This is Hugin. Uh, Dr. Marina. And this is Bjorn. But we also call him Loki because Danish. This is a surprise. Yeah. I told you they were coming. This is most of them, but we didn't need the last three. Someone has to guard the gate. There are seven of us in total, so. Excellent. But these are the most trustworthy, and they follow my lead. And they all say at the same time, you're not our leader. And then she turns back very sharply towards them and just says, then who makes all the plans? And they say, you. Who executes them? You. Then why am I not the leader? Because you're not. And they're just shaking their head, and it turns into kind of like a sibling argument for just a second, and then it goes quiet. Everyone just staring at each other. Hmm. Why am I here? Well, to meet them and to... Execute on what I suggested later tonight. I do have a few meetings that I need to attend to. One of them I would like you to accompany accompany me if you can. And before dawn, we go into the Shadowlands. Well, you are always more palatable when I'm by your side. So perhaps in a social meeting situation, I can accompany you. My thought exactly. The rest of you, how long are you planning to be here? Uh, Hugin is... In London. He's gating you, but he's he has the wicked smile. He comes closer towards you, hand outstressed, uh, to shake it. Um... Well, you think it's hands, but when you look and see, it's really more talents, like a bird would have. Mm-hmm. So there's three of them. And you're not quite sure that you can actually shake his hand without cutting yourself. But he is stretching one out. I will clasp him by the wrist mm. instead. So he can dig into my arm if he wants to, but that's up to him. He wants to, yeah. No, you feel the claws and the sharpness of them, but the, it, he's very much in control. Good. There'll be a slight nod then at the the acknowledgement of the control. Um, the guy with the tattoos, he's simply nodding and just saluting you. Just very quiet, and the uh, uh, red-haired lady, she's starting to walk around you, taking notes and saying, fascinating, fascinating, very interesting. Uh, Nemesis says, she thinks she's a psychologist and she studies the beast. Unfortunately, you cannot get a PhD in the beast, but she thinks she has it. Well, the way that PhDs seem to work is that you write something that no one else knows or believes 
and you get a doctorship for it, so using that criterion. Yeah, unfortunately no one can read her paper. But she is quite effective. It does not seem like the, the red-haired woman is paying attention to the conversation. She's paying attention to you very much, and it's quite unnerving. I want to draw my pistol on her as quick as possible and just have it like an inch from her face to see if she reacts. She's looking down the barrel into your eyes and saying, yeah. interesting response. And then she's jotting down more notes. Hmm. But she doesn't flinch. Nope. Cool, good. I go. That would usually get a response from some. Well, you're, I knew you were not going to pull the trigger. I knew th that as well. <laughs> Nemesis says she's Malkavian. One of them you can slightly tolerate. I don't think you can. <laughs> Most Malkavians are playthings for others. I... I wish her all the best, but... Truth be told, theirs is just the worst lot of us all. They're easy sport. And Nemesis, she looks into, well, the air of the ceiling like she's in thought, and she says, I've never eaten a Malkavian before. No delicacy. Oh. A real, uh... <laughs> I've always been worried that their madness is infectious. No, no, it simply gives a maelstrom of flavor. Uh, the doctor is still taking notes, like you are the most fascinating subject, and everything that's coming out of your mouth is complete gold when it mm -hmm. comes to science. So... You have your horsemen, you have your plan. The Shadowlands? This night? Yeah, I have uh, one more screw I need to turn, and then a meeting with Gabriel uh, to fortify our position. And it's not been unknown for us to deal with the Anarchs before. They are preferable to all the other sex. <laughs> They're the ones, and he looks at the Malkavian, that are easiest to tolerate. I'll give you that. Definitely. But I do have one thing I need to do before we go there. There's a certain Toradol Primogen I need to talk to. Comfort, really. Hmm. So, uh, if you guys can play nice, I'll be back later. And she looks at the Bruja and says, Don't kill him, he can be quite flippant, but it's a part of a charm. To his charm. I am very charming. Pity me of charm itself. She says, just as dry. <laughs> There's just like a moment where Kildry's just like staring and sizing up these three kindred that he's now in a room with. And he's, he's just like, I got a grenade here, the handgun there, incendiaries. The only exit I really know of is, and like his mind is just playing through the combat scenarios. Um, but he's just very much stone faced, shades on. Seems content and is not looking forward to however long he's going to be here with these kindred, but he'll be looking to kind of try and find out how they work together, whether or not they're actually close, and if not, whether he can just kind of widen any chinks in the group makeup. Just with a little bit of dementation here and there, just as he's talking to them, just 
in the conversation just to make them work less well together. Um, well, it's all subliminal. It's all beneath the. There's no anything that's overt. You quickly figure out they don't need much help to argue. It's great. Easy to start, and uh, I mean the guy with the talents. He's mostly his his arguments are mostly based in growls and sneers. Mm -hmm. uh, Does he want to like? Be, is he the dominating one? Is he the one who wants to be the best, the alpha, the on top dog? He's the guard dog. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, the doctor talks the most. Mostly, mm -hmm. it's nothing anyone wants to hear. Mm -hmm. Just uh, self-glorifying in her theories, and uh, she's talking about how genius she is. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very, you finally figure it out, but she's very, very, very inhumane to look at, and that's why you're creeped out. Okay. She's uh, very far from being able to blush. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to describe it. Uh, Matters a hatter, but again, this is a weird thing because she's creepy, but there's also something very comforting about her once in a while. You can see the psychologist peer through once in a while, but you mm -hmm. think it's been a long time since she's actually helped anyone. Yeah. And uh, well, the soldier. Bjorn or Loki, he's very quiet. He does not really say anything. Once in a while, he'll just uh, if 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 the guard dog gets too close to to the doctor, he will kind of get in the way and push them back. And you can see those two guys; they know yep. they've been in combat together, and they know that they are an even match. It's not yeah, okay. He's a much more independent, self-made personality. He doesn't need to beat others to... Yeah, gotcha. Okay. And uh, after a while, he actually looks at you and talks and says, You like guns? I have a passing familiarity with them. He pulls out with a smile from a large case, a rifle that looks like it needs to be mounted on something to be shot mm -hmm. but there's no mount it's just mm -hmm. the sheer size of it and you know what it is uh, he's pulling it out and you know handing it to you so you can feel the weight of it and the power behind it and he just says custom made with a smile on his face you feel well, kind of like you need potents to fire this yeah he um he will not really pick it up. He'll have it like rest one tip on the ground. He's not showing any cards. Yeah. Um, he'll be saying, I'm interested to know your source, especially if they're local. I'm afraid not, but I can have something shipped. Potentially. It's um, a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? In terms of the masquerade. Nobody, uh, if nobody sees you firing the shot, doesn't matter. Everyone's going to hear it though, and definitely, silence of death helps just a little bit, but not really. This is the big gun. I have various others for more covert operations. You uh, also recognize one of his tattoo as a. Um, how to translate this, the, the Danish, they're called Jaeger soldiers, basically. They need, they're comparable to uh, SAS, I think. Yeah. Uh, and you you can even recognize his, his platoon and where he's been stationed. Is it like World War II era? No. Is it from, or is it much more recent? Much more recent, like okay. Afghan and... Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Middle Eastern places. Yeah. We'll make some conversation about that war's a bitch, basically. 
and that toughens you up and you come through it. And again, he's just going to use a little bit of dementation and just see if he can get a little bit of that PTSD rolling through. Mm. But it comes from a sympathetic voice. Well, uh, just for the fun of it, let's do a roll. Just one roll to see how fucking crazy you're actually making these guys during the the length of this conversation. Yeah, Kojo is not a fan of these guys. These are some powerful kinder that have just rocked up to London at a dangerous time. Um, and one of them's carrying, like, a mounted machine gun that they just fire for fun. All this. Um, oh, powers, dementation. What's done me? I'm gonna rouse. Hunger gain. Nice. And then the only thing you feel while you're getting hungry is uh, it's like the altar is pulling you towards it. Mm -hmm. Not that you can't resist it, but you kind of feel like there's something magnetic about it. Let's actually stick a willpower in there just to see if I get another zero. Well, you can reroll two. Uh, Can I reroll the success just to see? Well, yeah, you can. You sure. can. And you did. <laughs> Paid off. So six, right? Six. Uh, six. Oh, no, five successes. You're right. Oh, six. Is it not six? I don't know. Five or six. Ah. Six says Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Well, <laughs> well, it's uh, it's fun to toy with them, and you you also get the. The feeling that they're young, like Nemesis, mm. no more than ten years kindred. You think they uh, speak again like they have a lot of power, but they have uh, acquired it very, very fast. Yeah, yeah. These are potentially like these are like the um, Killjoy is now seeing these guys as those tomatoes on the on the vines. That have like grown large quickly and are like at the, the perfect moment of sweetness to the point that they could go and create their own sets of plants. But right now they're young enough, they're sweet enough, they've experienced enough. These aren't thin bloods, these are real kindred, but they've matured. <laughs> There's a, a real sense of him now in the shopping aisle. You can find out a bit more information, get these guys a bit riled up enough to make a mistake, call a masquerade breach on them, blood hunt them. Well, you're definitely uh, tearing away at their willpower. Is there anything else you want to do before we change scene? I'm just going to keep on just getting that little wedge in between each of every chink and just keep on causing a little bit more mental feedback and, yeah, widening the gaps. Yep. Also with a smile on his face. It's a, it is a delightful conversation about weaponry. Mm-hmm. Um, Vaughn, you're in a particular alley close to the shark um, with uh, Benjamin standing next to you. He's uh, holding a bottle of sake and he's just pouring a, a tiny bit of it on the ground, not saying anything. Uh, Kind of just um, looking at you. And and Vaughn like looks up to the shard. And I imagine there's like you can see little construction things set up from where like the helicopter careened into it. And there's like, you know, it's covered in like the yellow tape and whatnot. And uh and then he looks in his the bag that he brought in this kind of like a duffel bag and he pulls out um spray paint cans and a few stencils and he looks down the alleyway that where he had landed um do i see anything do i see anything of note um there's a bit of a mark from where you crashed her into the wall brings back back to some uh, bad memories of lost control 
but most of it has been cleaned up. It's mostly just a bit of brick that's been pushed in or cracked. So, uh... <laughs> and he, Vaughn looks to Benjamin, he's like, Hey, thanks for coming, man. Uh, anytime, bro. People and Vaughn will go up... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's just people shouldn't go through this kind of thing alone. I know it won't help, but it's something. And he goes over to where the bricks are cracked, and he starts laying out like a quick stencil. And uh, basically, over the course of about like a few minutes, puts down on a black background the image of like a white bird, kind of like a small white bird, like a dove, surrounded by blackness. And uh, you can see that the the border, like the border, the background itself, like the edges of it, almost look like uh, raven's wings, kind of like outstretched out. And it's almost like it's consuming this dove that's in the center of the darkness. It's like a dove, a bright dove in a dark sky. And Vaughn kind of like takes a step back and like looks at it, looks to Benjamin, and he just. Reaches out for the sake and just takes a swig. He hands you the bottle and uh, looks at it and says, What's the symbolism? Hmm. And he takes another drag and he's like, Sometimes. Sometimes. <coughs> darkness consumes something that's pure. Something that should have just been left alone. Well, I think it's good that you're feeling remorseful. It means the beast that have not won, I guess. Well, it did at one point, but I appreciate it. Well, that's the the trouble with eternity, right? Once in a while, it will win. And uh, we are the ones who have to live with its mistakes. You're definitely right about that. <sighs> Thanks again, man. I have a question, if you don't mind. Of course. You've been quiet since you came black from... Uh, back from Blackmore, like something shook you to your very core. I mean, I don't know you well, uh, but you do not—you do not seem like you're all yourself. If that makes sense. I saw something. I guess the best way to put it, same shit, different day. But, so got a glimpse of something I hadn't seen in over 70 years. So, kind of rattled me a little bit. Fair enough. I won't pry, but... Just, I'm here if you need to, you know, go through it, man. I, I know what it's like to have flashes. I just don't understand certain people. You ever just look at people and just think they, that they're just alien to you, you know? They just don't, you're on like a different wavelength. It doesn't, you just don't get it, you know? How could people like that exist? Yeah. I find that... It does not really help to try to understand why people are the way they are. They, It does not change the, their actions or... But you can choose if you want to be around it, I guess. 
Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we usually move on when we get bored or when the area around us is too filled with black, uh, black memories, darkness, or yeah. Or maybe it's just the cold that we all feel to move along. I've been thinking about that. He uh, punches you on the on the shoulder and says, "We still have that trip in December." <laughs> Trying to smile, but you can see he still has worried eyes. Well, December can't come soon enough. Oh, it's gonna be shit. fun. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just getting tired. It's like everyone... It's like for everyone... Every... I know I sound so, like... Stupid right now, but it seems like everywhere I go, people are the same. They always want something. They're willing to do whatever. I just... People have a scary way of repeating themselves, that's that's true. But sometimes it's not f just bad, I mean... I don't know if you've had anyone like this, but... I have someone I care about, and... She reminds me of someone who's dead, but... This person, I swear, it's... It, it could be her. Reincarnated in another person's body. Without knowing of their past life, but... I was drawn to her instantly. She... What I'm trying to say is, sometimes good people, they show up again. Are you talking about her? No, not her specifically, a, a human. Okay. Yeah. But she reminds me very much of my sister. But my sister has been dead for, yeah, 60 years or so. And Vaughn puts his hand on Benjamin's shoulder and hands it back the bottle of sake. Takes a swig. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh shit. I'm dying. It's good to have people who remember us. Speaking of, whoever it is you lost, I can see loss in your eyes. Maybe you should do something to remember him or her by. Maybe that will help. You're right. I'm sure your friends will help out. They probably suffered the same loss. think about that but I'll be honest with you I like I'm trying to be as independent as possible at this point in time I don't know if I want to ask anyone for anything except maybe you well you can always count on me I'm not going anywhere thanks man even though I want to this city is becoming a little bit boring and whenever you're out at the, your adventures, I have nothing to do. Yeah. December can't come soon enough. Oh, we have to find a way to occupy our time until then. I'm sure we'll think of something. But I this, any looks back at the mural on the wall <coughs> I'd like to see no more of this if I can help it <clears throat> we just make an effort man and he takes another swig of the sake um let me see you have to do a roll here uh you have to do a which subterfuge is this like a passive thing, or am I doing this like purposefully? 
uh, it's to uh, resist something. Mm. It's. Let me see here. Uh, this is important to him. Yeah. So your difficulty is four. No. That's a zero more. Uh, that's four, five, six. You can feel something trying to enter your mind. But, uh, it's a total of uh, six, you said? Yeah, if you wanna. All right. I think you I'm have to <laughs> get two <laughs> zeros mm -hmm. there to succeed. I think yeah, I think I already have a zero. Mm. So I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. So I can only re-roll two, though. I'll just reduce it down to two. Nope. One more. Uh, Well, you hear a familiar voice in your head. Hey, man. It's Josh. Yeah. Are you around tonight? Um, yeah. Gabriel is having a meeting in a couple of hours and he asked me to ask you if you could make it without telling the prince. Where is it? The bar, of course. And just what time? I don't know. Time is weird. Um, uh, Gabriel says two hours. And that time is not weird. Alright. Yeah, I'll be there. Good. And you feel the connection server. Uh, Benjamin looks at you. You can see there's something going on. He just says, "What's up?" I just was contacted. There's a meeting with the Anarchs in two hours at the bar, and I'm supposed to keep it on the down low. Sounds fun. I'm always uh, up for drinking all of Gabriel's beer. So. <laughs> Alright. I'll feel better with you there. I'll come along. Let's get some chips or something on the way. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds is, good. Is there anything else you want to do before we change scene? Uh, Vaughn just goes over to the mural and just kind of does like a, like a, just touches it. It just kind of looks down the alleyway one more time where he ran off to run towards the water after he had done what he did. Hmm. Just kind of looks in the darkness for a second, and then he turns around and joins up with Benjamin. He starts going to find a fast food place. Yep. <laughs> on the way back. And some more booths. Alrighty. I think this, this is, uh, yeah, before we take a break, then we take this scene. Alex! The prince himself, very early evening. You are uh, sitting in front of your tree, praying, gathering your thoughts, feeling the, well, the very calming aura, almost cradling aura that this entity gives off. Mm -hmm. You are yep. standing in a, uh, a field you've been in before with fruit trees everywhere of uh, various uh, sorts and, and types and you feel your um, almost like your astral body moving and then you're standing in a long white hall everything is very clinical you can see a couple of uh, very large uh, windows, but it does not seem like they're leading to the outside. It seems like they're leading to small rooms. 
you hear footsteps, very echoing footsteps in these very barren halls. Uh, almost looks like a hospital, you think, at first. And then you see a, a, a guy in a lab coat walking down, he's jotting down things and mumbling to himself. Uh, his footsteps are echoing through the hall and uh, you feel like you need to or want to follow him. He does not see you, it seems. He passes right through you. Uh, I'm astral projecting, I get it, yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, follow him. Uh, he goes into a room where there are two gurneys with corpses on them, or body bags. Uh, he opens the first, and the shape of it is weird, and you recognize the, the monstrous skeleton of Lady Blackmore. The skin is gone, but the shape of the wings are still there, and her, her long uh, limbs and claws. And the uh, scientist, he says, subject is IC0 uh, of unknown uh, type. It seems to have the ability to extend its own limbs and has grown wings. Uh, and then he moves to the next uh, thing and opens it. You see a very crisp corpse but it's wearing Victor's clothes that are completely unscathed, except a bit of salt. So, the body's intact. It, it, it's, he's, does it look like Victor? It looks like a charcoal corpse, but it's wearing his right, clothes. Right. Very distinct clothes that you know to be fireproof. First question, um, given the ethereal nature of what I'm currently doing, uh, does this feel like a real place? Is, it, is there a way for me to tell if, this, if I'm actually projecting into what is essentially a, an actual place actually happening? You don't know if, if, if this is a memory, a vision of the future, or if right. you're actually here in the present. So is there any, and it's okay if there's not, but is there any way for Alex to ascertain uh, any further clarity on that point? Or is it just a do, vision and he needs to accept it? Do a, I think, intelligence and blood sorcery. Okay. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Wrong one. Let's see here. Um, that's two successes, probably not enough. Two? With two, you can't really get a yeah. sense of the time. Okay. Uh, but, let me see here. I mean, you're trying to figure it out. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out a couple things about it. First of all, and and then does it feel real to me? Like, in other words, sometimes places like this can be more figurative, more metaphorical than actually actual places. Does this feel like an actual place, or does this feel like a vision place in the sense that, like, it's kind of like a dream place? Well, with with two successes, you're it's not hard for you to do, uh, but you kind of break free from the guidance and move around the room, look at okay. a a computer, and you okay. can see the time is now, the date is now. Okay. So uh, kind of gather that this must be the present. Yeah, got it. Uh, but you're not. Awesome. You have no idea where you are. Uh, um, since I can move around, I definitely like to uh, take in as much information about not only the two bodies, but also the doctor. If there's a name tag, if there's anything at all, uh, if there's identifying information, 
It seems everything here is very bare. Okay. Very minimum, very secretive. He does not have anything. He does have a card, but he does not have a name or anything. It's just a number. Okay. Uh, a key card. Uh, if you saw his face, you would be able to recognize him. But there's no really distinct features, but this, this seems way too clinical, way too polished, and way too secret. Yeah. And that, that, yeah, yeah, he's get he's getting he's getting uh, operation antigen vibes here. Um but looking at Victor, he's gonna move towards that corpse. <laughs> Would it strike him as odd that it's charred? What's My understanding you? is Victor was very old, and that's What's what it. The decomposition there feels a little off to me, but maybe that's maybe Alex is wrong about that. Well, when you're comparing to Blackmore, yeah, who is just a crisp skeleton, I mean yeah. she's basically ashed. Yeah, and, and and yes, you think of Victor's age, and you would think he would be ash, or at right. least a very broken down skeleton you don't know his age for sure but you know right. he's at least 200 i mean he he knew quite a lot was very capable and powerful and you don't just get that way overnight so he looks yeah. more like nera did when she came out of the fire yeah uh, but he's not moving and if he's alive he's in torpor definitely that's what i'm concerned about like the fact that he's not actually like that he didn't actually experience final death and that he's also in this place <laughs> so yeah that's not great um is there any just looking at him for a second i want to focus on him for a second um is there anything that alex can pick up that any details that stand out to him beyond what would normally be expected obviously the fire for his clothing they all have that thanks to him he wore it um, he's been taken in by these people, obviously, but, but are there, is there, is just by looking at it or if a role is necessary, I'm happy to make one. Are there details that kind of like would catch his attention or stand out as interesting or out of place? I mean, apart from the, you think he should have sustained more damage than he, he has. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can see his, his, with your sense the unseen, his clothes are glowing. You know it to be magical. His, his cane is still intact. Um, and when you're kind of honing in on, on, on the magical, the supernatural, you, you see Lady Blackmore's ashes, they're kind of glinting. Like there are small pieces of glass in them, but you know they're not. It's just something you can see with that vision you have. And uh, when you're focusing in on it, you f you feel like you you need her ashes, yeah, to achieve your goal. Okay. The whole reason you sat down and, and prayed for guidance was to figure out what to do, with Judith. Yeah. And this has led you to this place. Okay. Given that, not only do I need her ashes, but also that there's a chance that Victor is in torpor mm. rather than that he is gone. And given how important he is to not only the Coterie, but of course the, the entire city, The next thing Alex is going to do is he's looking for any identifying markers of where this is. Like, he understands that this is a sterile medical facility, probably very likely run do within... Do a resolve and intelligence. It needs okay. to be super high, though. going to surge. Can I surge? In the yes. Okay. <laughs> you can surge. I'm going to push that Vita even though I'm out of body. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna rouse. 
Process That's a success. success. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push here. So feel free to push back. But given that I have that Lilith is facilitating this, can I add my specialty with her? Uh, not for can this. Can I add this the extra is, dice uh, to this? This is kind of entering your mind palace and you know thinking about your experiences and something might pop off. Uh, to give you the answer of where you are. So this okay. is this is purely memory. Okay, okay. I just thought I since I'm in communion with her on some level, I just thought maybe maybe I might be able to call on her for a little extra here. So it is it is. Wh where are the two attributes again? I'm sorry. Uh, intelligence and resolve. Okay. Plus two, I think. Yeah. Got it. Gonna re-roll that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not a lot of success. It's not great. On a lot of dice. Okay, three that's nine. three. <laughs> um, yeah, they're they're hiding this information well. Yeah, you it's heard hard. It, it's hard to move around in here. You heard it in passing or something, or you didn't really. Um, Maybe you didn't pay too much attention to it, but you definitely remember a facility being discussed, but you can't for the life of you remember where it was. Yeah. But there should be some facility outside of London somewhere. Outside of London. Okay. You feel like you have it on your tip of your tongue, but you can't just remember where it was. You remember it was on the night where uh, Killjoy went the bit berserk and the, the lady on the roof was, was speaking German and that's where you got it from was JK's translation basically. Uh, but you don't remember, perhaps it's because you don't know German that you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, all right. But it, you don't, you know it's a real place and it's within yeah. reach. Yeah. He's got too much to think about his prints. He can't. He can't keep track of all the details. Um, all right. So it is a real place. He knows that, and they're being kept there. Um, well, he's definitely paying attention. I know this is this is a Spartan type of uh, setup. Very sterile. No discernible features, or at least not too many to speak of. Um, is there a way for him to? Well, I guess the next thing, since he can't identify, he would, he would still look for identifying uh, principles, but you said this is his mind palace, so I don't know that he can actually fish out details that aren't there. So, so uh, because well, because can, I'm still thinking of maybe he could like look around this place to to gather at least a walk. few more details. You can walk. Uh, the okay, horse. that's what he's going. Yeah, that's what he's going to do because because unless there's anything else uh, in this particular. Uh, room. He is going to move around and and search for any any kind of identifying. You feel like you're a ghost. Like you can walk through the walls of the place. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, nobody seems to pay attention. I mean, at some point, perhaps because you're very fucking perceptive. Yeah. Uh, the guy, the, the the scientist in here, he kind of gets the chills for a moment. Yeah. Looks around, but yeah. he does not. He looks directly at you, but you can see he's shaking his head like. It must be my mind or something. Uh, but you you feel the the guidance take over again. Yeah. As you're leaving the room, you, your arm is kind of you think at first brushing through Lady Blackmore's ashes, but you actually you pick some of it up. Oh. You see okay. it disappearing from reality and oh, it's in your head. Okay. Yeah. And then you uh, you come out on the the large hallway um, you definitely get the feeling that you're quite far below ground and you're walking past well seems like showrooms but we, you quickly figure out this is cages yeah of kindred strapped to various mechanisms and they're being uh, tested on it's not kindred you're familiar with, 
they probably have been here since uh, what was referred to as the fall of London. Um, but... So no one here that I would also recognize. Because no. Alex, Alex has like he he was brought up inside like at least maybe there, there is on the a, periphery. Maybe there's a ventral here and there yeah. or something yeah. that you haven't yeah. met before but not really interacted that much with. I mean you're good with okay. faces, so Okay. Uh but uh it's just uh you're walking the IC zero wing. Okay. And they have a Most of them are kindred, but you do find a lupine on display in there. It seems like it's been forced into its hybrid form and kind of paralyzed. Wow. Oh. And heavily chained. Most I mean, I always thought those things were real, but I I, I don't think Alex has seen one. Mm. <laughs> Only Vaughn's, yeah. Vaughn's uh, right. mentions of, of supernatural creatures that share the night with you. Which is going to get Alex immediately thinking like, okay, it's not just us. It's everything down here. And he's... <laughs> there's, a, there's a moment of curiosity here where he's going to be like, okay, what else is down here? Like, he, he, he knows he has encountered... Um, like, he's going to just go ahead and call like demonic entities. You know, like obviously, there's by way of his coterie mates and their struggles, he's he knows that these things exist too, on some level. Uh, is there anything like that down here? You find a a room you can't enter. Okay. It's uh, <laughs> well, that's the same kind of energy as the choir gave off. But you, you definitely feel this is nope, nope. Yes, I'm not going in yeah. this room. Otherwise, <laughs> something bad is going to happen. It's just that right. lingering feeling of daggers between your shoulder blades when you walk right. towards the wall. Yeah. Um, something. There's something in there. It's not pleasant. Something holy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you can't seem to get out of this floor. But you do figure out that it's like the third basement floor of some building. The third basement floor? Yeah, and it, it okay. seems like a, quite a huge facility. I mean, you're walking through the halls and times are weird, but you count approximately t 20 kindred on display being tested for various things. Some of them are in Lady Blackmore state and others are quite more uh, awake and aware of what's going on. It's a on. goddamn underground zoo, basically. Yep. Yeah. And it, it's okay. kind of repulsive, some of the things you see. Oh, being yeah. Done to the kindred and the way they're tested to. Well, they don't die, so they can basically right. be cut open and closed again and again and again. Given his ability, which he didn't immediately anticipate, but now realizes that he can actually interact with some things here. Not everything, but he did pick up the ashes. Can he do anything else like that? Is there anything at all that he can do? Uh, anything he can interact with beyond that? Um, well, you could try, but he, okay. are you trying to touch a person or you kind of want to push a scalpel on the floor? Or what's the, what's the thing you're trying to attempt here? Or throw a pen across the room? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I was I was thinking I was thinking, I was wondering if maybe there'd be a way to somehow uh I don't really have an idea, but there was like something I was thinking about that would reveal or at least produce an event that would that would give away the location of this place a little bit or something like that. I don't know though. I'm not really I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, well, you can try and open the elevator. I could. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, do a, a blood sorcery and resolve, because you're okay. trying to 
materialize yourself for just the briefest of seconds. Yeah. Okay. It's not a super high difficulty. It's pushing a button, but it still it requires some willpower and some magic to do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna surge again. If I, if if, if I'm allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a success. The beast sleeps. <laughs> and, uh... Two. I I'm going to need more than that, I suspect. Two is enough to push a button. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do it. Yeah. You uh, open the elevator and that seems to kind of I, you don't know if it's in your head or how this actually works but it seems to move you into a different physical space that lets lets you go to the the lobby basically of this place okay uh, yeah and you enter a, a way more presentable and and normal kind of uh, lobby area where there's plants there's people there are couches there are decorations there are paintings there are you know about 30 or 40 people walking around to and from places uh it's dark outside you can see a huge nature area of fields and forest and it does not seem like there's any other buildings next to this uh huge research facility yeah um and it has so a a logo on the outside of the building but no name yep. Got it. What's the logo look like? Um, kind of like a exploding virus. I don't know. It's it's kind of a mix between how you draw a virus and a sun. Right. Yeah. So like a a, a circle with some things from them and a soft sun in the background. It's isolated. This is a. Um remote place that it's in there are trees and stuff like that it's not this is not city this is not urban no it's definitely okay. rural and uh fenced in and you can see i mean it's not obviously military personnel but it's kind of like what you what you have you know you look like a normal guy in a suit but you're actually carrying a gun around like your security personnel this is the UK, though. This is not like some other place or anything like that. Exactly, and it's not legal to have armed guards on your grounds. So you're thinking maybe military, and if yeah. it's antigen, they can get away with a lot of shit. Right. Is there an address? <laughs> I know I'm pushing here, but is there an address, or or if, if failing that, is there a street sign or something like that 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 he any kind of identifying markers whatsoever? No, but I think if if you could pinpoint on it or see it from a satellite in the air, you would yeah you would be able to recognize it. But you can't yeah. figure out exactly where you are right now. Right, got it. But maybe um, so he's definitely the... going to take a look around in terms of like the surrounding areas. He's going to try to commit it all to memory in the sense that like with the idea that he could try to match up this location with any identifiable landmarkers at all. Um, I mean, the more make... you can describe it to either Henry or Darius, the yeah. easier it probably is for them to figure That's what out. he's attempting to do. He's trying to gather as much information as possible. He says, because, you know, he, he's thinking that even still, even with a military installation building, even with like trees and remoteness and everything else, this could be any number of places. So, um, yeah, he, he's trying to, he's trying, he's looking, and I realize that he's, he's not able to identify street signs or anything, but he's looking for any identifiable the things that wouldn't that were unusual uh, I mean, a tree a, that is displaying marks or or a, uh, huge, is a different color a huge facility in the middle of a forest yeah that's that's probably the best thing in the fence what kind of plants are here uh i don't know normal cold forest okay all right yeah. <laughs> i just thought 
It's like, you know what? If, if I can get the types of plants, I have people who are experts in plant life. <laughs> and so, you know, like, like they, they would know where certain things are growing. So like that he's also thinking about that. So yeah, uh, but just typical, yeah, cold forest stuff. Okay. Trying to commit it to memory. Yeah. And you're uh, taken back uh, out of the vision and you actually return to your body with okay. the ashes in your hand okay. still sparkling a bit yeah that's to him is, is amazing this is like this is something he would know he gives thanks and blessings to the dark mother he is yeah he is praising her and because this is a miracle in his mind like being able to take one, something from one place and bring it here it's a it, he he, yeah, he feels like he's accomplished something already tonight. Of yeah. course, with her help. Adrian? She, well, she's probably been in the room, but she does not disturb you uh, when you're praying. But when she see that you come back to reality or whatever, she does not know what you're doing when you're, when you're praying. So, uh, but she's uh, just saying... Uh, I, I've looked at Judith and I've asked Henry uh, his theory is, is that she's transforming somehow um, he is suggesting we pull out the stake and see what happens but I'm not quite sure what uh, is going to happen did you gain, gain any clarification on anything while you're meditating i have um there's a facility it's a military installation it's remote kindred are being kept there um he begins he begins to describe it, but he will skip past most of that to say that he also has recovered some ashes of Lady Blackmore, um, which of course he's going to contain as well as he can in, in, in a an appropriate vessel. And um he also uh he, he says, so I think Alex correct me if I'm overstepping here, but I think that he knows that there's some connection between Judith and Lady Blackmore, given her, the way she manifested certain ways, um, the the details that they've gotten from the changes in her and all that. I mean, the whole uh, prayer and the vision started with um, the, 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 quest the, the question of how do I uh, turn her back? Is it even right. possible? Exactly, because he's trying to do that. Um, and so he has these ashes. He feels that they are essential to this process. Otherwise, the Dark Mother would have never allowed him to take them in the first place, uh, would have never granted him that ability and power. And he is convinced that they are part of this process. But given the nature of this, uh, it I'm sure that, that they'll require people who are skilled in the arts of, of the blood and things like that. Therefore, Darius might need to be involved here uh, with this as well. Uh, he will be happy to remove the stake, but he's not comforted by the fact that nobody really knows what's going to happen afterwards. <laughs> so, so he wants his, his, uh, yeah, his sheriff there you know to kind of help and oversee this process perhaps near it too because she has some insight into the workings of the blood as well well he, there is this thing with the he thought she was turning to shimishi yeah and but he's not sure yeah he, nobody he, he even yeah. says he's no victor and uh his sorcery is more poison and combat oriented mm -hmm. but if 
this is a magical component of some sort and uh, I mean everything with with kindred is it comes down to blood so yeah maybe she needs to have the essence of her sire but he's kind of pulling his shoulder yeah like he does not know he's never seen or heard of a kind of thin blood turning back uh, but it's again it's not his area of expertise um, Nera is well she thinks you should just trust the dark mother and if she's given you the ashes that should be enough to whatever it is you want to do yeah and and adrian she says uh okay jumping off that let's say it works she returns to being a normal 18 year old girl who's been declared death for like seven months or not seven months four months we can take care of it you know what's what's the plan here the plan is this. I know, just from my own experience, from experiencing, from seeing it done before, and I'm quite certain you're familiar with this. He's speaking to Adrian at this point. Uh, that we have the power to rewrite memories. I can. We can do this. My plan is if we are able to restore her humanity, we can account for her disappearance, not only by rewriting her memories, but providing all of the evidence we need to say that she was on a trip, she went to Paris with some of her friends, Oh, she's going she to get will, so grounded. She is. She will remember all kinds of restaurants and experiences that she had there. She will have receipts. That's easy enough to do. She will have all the evidence she needs. There will be pictures. That's also easy enough to do. Pictures and video showing her there we this can all the narrative we that is well within our technology right now we can do that and i, I hear you I, I will i will i will rewrite i will tell her a story of the last four months and she will be here because she you know, part of that story will be that she was at a concert and got a special visit with me. And then, of course, she will go home. And yes, she will she will be grounded, but she will have evidence, tourist items, things like that with her when she goes back that will match up with her memories. And parents will be angry, but well, they'll have all the evidence that they need to show that she was there. I'm all. I'm, I'm sure they're going to be glad to see their daughter alive. Of course. Well, we we have the power to do so, or at least I I have used it before. I mean, it can be volatile should she see you for example uh, that might jog some memories so I think the evidence that you're speaking of being physical is a good idea because she can kind of ground herself in fake memories if she actually thinks it's rational because if she's if she starts to think about it and right. really think about it, it it will eventually break yeah or we have to continuously reinforce it so i don't know you seem to care about her in in some way but 
she can't see you again if you remove yourself from the memory. No, she, she can't see any of us again. But it's definitely possible and... She has to... She has to disappear back into the world. And then when she does, I will never see her again. No. I will never see her again. None of us will. And that will be that will be something that that is decreed to anyone who has had contact with her. Um, they will not see her again. And if if it's not if it's within my power, and I'm sure it is, um, her family will be strongly urged to relocate uh, through a number of job offers and, and things like that that come come their way. Coincidentally. People are transferred uh, to different parts of the world and things like that. Um, yeah, she'll be removed from London altogether uh, in as standard and conventional a way as possible. Um, these things happen all the time. And she will not, yeah, she will not see me again. Um, there is no question about that. Having, being able to get her back out in the world and living a normal life, that's enough. Well, it's very gracious of you. Yeah. Well, I'm trying. I will tell Scott that she smiles. We had a conversation and I, I think this will make him uh, reassure him in some ways. Yeah. Um, she deserves to have a normal life. And, and if this opportunity can happen even once in my who knows how long lifetime Darius says, no well, it's, it will be some sort of spectacle, I mean, to have witnessed someone returning to kind, thin blood or not. Alex is going to get really, he's going to get really serious at, when he turns to Darius. Like, he, there's, for a moment there, and he's at humanity five, so it's hard for him to to express emotion at this point that, that appears more human and things like that. But when he turns to Darius, his expression will have changed entirely and it'll become very ironclad in the sense that, make no mistake, I will make sure in whatever ways are necessary that this remains a secret. It, no one can know of this. This will be the miracle that never occurred. No one will ever know of this. No one will breathe a word of it. If they do, there will be consequences. And he didn't even hesitate to say that, like you know, there will be consequences. And so, you know, it's not only that that he's letting Judith go and, and that she is returning to the world, but that it's a miracle that no one will ever know about. Because if they do, there's a chance that someone could hunt her down and do the same thing to her that they did before. If he has to, he will erase their memories of every single person who's ever met her. I don't think that would be necessary, sir. There is, he simply is just- <laughs> That's how serious he is. Yeah. He's like, you know, this is, this is how much it matters. I will make sure no one talks. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And it'll come down from that. Like, it's just like, <laughs> fuck this up for me. You know? I, I have the second half of that scene prepared for you. Is there anything okay. you want to do? We're going to get to Harris and everything, but yeah, before we change scene and, or have a break rather. Um, um I'm good for now. Plans made with Judith and everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
He's well, going to make sure that, yeah. Um, Adrian said that, uh, you know, she was saying that, you know, seeing him and everything obviously would, would break that. So, like, he's he's intending to do, he's intending to set the scene for her to to complete this transformation in exactly the milieu, the setting that he described. That this was this was simply a special kind of VIP experience, like everybody else gets, and and uh, then she's gonna go home. Adrian will show you how it's done, so you can do it yourself in yeah. the future. Okay. But basically, walk you through, because. Uh, I mean, you're very s strong, and you're very uh, in your. Um, um, I mean, you have your hooks in your subjects with your yeah. domination. Like, yeah. there's no faltering here, but you yeah. haven't really fiddled around with memories before. Yeah. Not in that sense. So she's kind of going to guide you through the process of it. And he'll accept that. Yeah, because yeah. he's he's going to need that. He's going to take all the help he can get there. He's going to. Well, you do bring all of his prowess to bear on this. You this matters more than anything. You have the potential to do it, she says. She, yeah. She'll just show you how. And you should pick it up quite fast, as you usually do. 